Wedding Bell Blues is a 1996 film directed by Dana Lustig, written by Lustig and Annette Galiti Gutierrez. And the only reason this film came on my radar was because Debbie Reynolds is in it. And before I, I watched it, I, I bought the DVD. Um, it wasn't that expensive, thankfully. So I was happy to take the risk and watch it, even though I realised quite quickly, due to how far down in the list she was billed, Debbie Reynolds was definitely only going to be in this sparingly. She's billed as playing herself. And because I'm very passionate about Debbie Reynolds, I will be talking in a little bit of detail about what her role is in this, but I'll save that for towards the end, in case you want to watch it as a fan of Debbie Reynolds and you don't want to know what her involvement is until you watch it. So I will I will give a kind of spoiler warning when I discuss that. But this film is about three women who are all in different stages of relationships and basically all at the same time everything goes wrong for all three of them. And they decide that the best way to get over these problems is to go to Vegas. But they also have an, un an ulterior motive. And I'm not sure how much to go, how much detail to go into about what that ulterior motive is without giving away any spoilers, but it is also kind of the main point of the film. So I will discuss that in a moment as well with a kind of semi-spoiler warning in case you don't want to know anything. But I'll say that I enjoyed it more than I expected to. The three women are all likeable. Um, we have Jasmine, Tanya and, and uh, Mickey. I feel like it was important that none of them were annoying. And I know that sounds like a, possibly a weird thing to say, but if there are films where the narrative's kind of just all right, as long as the characters are okay, you can continue to enjoy the film. But if a narrative's not maybe the most compelling and then you have an annoying character, it just kind of makes the film impossible. But I really like the characters in this one. Um, we have Elena Douglas as Jasmine, Paulina Poritskova as Tanya, and Julie Warner as Mickey. I don't have a favourite out of the three of them. Maybe Jasmine, if I had to pick a favourite, but I'm not completely attached to that opinion. But I, I enjoyed their opinions well enough um, and kind of where they were coming from and the different stages of relationships that they were in because they all had various different problems. And it is an important conversation to have about the expectations placed on women to get married, certainly in the mid-90s, maybe not so much nowadays, but it still happens that if you're a woman of a certain age and you're not married or engaged to be married, people will start asking you, have you found a partner? Are you going to get married? When are you going to settle down? And it, it's an important conversation about the extremes some women may end up going to just to shut other people up. And I thought it, it, it addressed it well. It was quite funny. It is classed a rom-com. It's classed as a rom-com. Obviously, there are romantic elements of it, but it's also the distinct lack of romance that kind of give it, gives it its main narrative. Was it funny? Well, yes, actually. Um, it wasn't laugh-out-loud, side-splittingly hilarious, but it was, it was warm. It was comforting. It was a cosy watch. Certainly, I would say it's an easy watch. It's a good film to put on if you want something that's decent enough, but not something where you have to be 100% engaged or, you know, it takes up all of your attention and you can't do anything else because you're so compelled by it. But it's good enough. I liked it. So the semi-spoiler here, they go to Vegas kind of with the intention of getting married and then getting divorced the next day. They go to Vegas because obviously it's very easy to get married in Vegas and then they're going to get divorced afterwards. They can then show their family the marriage certificates and basically say, shut up. I've been married, you can no longer ask me when I'm going to get married. Which is drastic action, but I don't blame them. Whether or not any of them follow through with this plan, I'm not going to say it. But I'll say it's unpredictable. It wasn't clear what direction it was going to take or which characters would end up with whom. Um, so I, I definitely praise it for keeping it, you know, fresh and surprising along the way. And now for me, my favourite bit, Debbie Reynolds. I will talk about her in some detail here. It starts off, the first mention is when they're in Vegas in a souvenir shop and one of them says, how many Debbie Reynolds keyrings do you need? The short answer to that question is, there are never enough. 
Um, but they then go and see one of her shows. Debbie Reynolds ha had quite a lengthy stint in Vegas performing and we get to see her performing um, for this. I'm not sure if this was actually material from her show. Certainly she interacts with the women at one point so it's definitely um, scripted or ad-libbed for the purpose of this film but maybe some of the material was also from her actual shows. If anybody does know that please feel free to let me know. I'd be very interested to know how much of the material was from her show. Not that we see an abundance of her material. We see little bits here and there um, but what really melted my heart and I hadn't expected this. Getting a bit emotional thinking about it because it's it's one of my favourites and it's when I fell in love with Debbie Reynolds. Um, the first of her films I ever saw was Tammy and the song Tammy is one of my all-time favourite songs and she sings it in this film and it's not the first time I've heard her singing Tammy um, in later years. There are various YouTube videos of her shows where she sings Tammy. Um, and I just wasn't expecting her to sing Tammy in this film and it melted me, uh, absolutely melted my heart uh, and I loved it. So she was in it a lot more than I expected and I really appreciate that. And to be honest they reference her quite a bit throughout it. I'm assuming the writers or at least one of the writers is a fan of Debbie Reynolds. Um, they do mention her a few times throughout. and. I absolutely adored her involvement in this. It was so much more intense than I expected and I'm so thankful for that. Wedding Bell Blues is not the most amazing film I've ever seen, it's not the most hilarious film I've ever seen, but it's a good film. I enjoyed it. It's in some ways offering an important discussion about the expectations on women to get married and yes their actions in this are quite ludicrous and over the top but that just mirrors the attitudes that some people have towards women who are unmarried. You know, if you can't dish it out, um, if you can't take it, don't dish it out. I enjoyed it. It is a film that I would watch again. I would probably never rush to watch it again, but if it was on TV or, you know, maybe at some point I will revisit the scenes with Debbie Reynolds. It's not bad. If you're looking for an easy watch, that's that does actually address some important issues and features some beautiful scenes with Debbie Reynolds. Wedding Bell Blues is, is certainly not a bad film to go with. 